All right, so I want to make power. I want to make real power. Now, all these new Mustangs and everything, they get a high compression ratio. You got to be real careful about the boost that you run. But I have a 2001 Mustang GT that I want to run high power, like 600 to 1,000 horsepower. And the things that you need to be capable to run that power safely in more than 30 seconds gets rather expensive really quick. And just the thought of having a car that you can just stomp the gas and you know for a fact that it can make it down that quarter mile in less than 10 seconds is just something that you cannot replace the feeling of. Now I've had fast motorcycles and you know, kind of fast cars, a pretty fast truck actually. And now it's time. We've had this car since it was brand new. It's on its second engine and it's time to make power. It's time to have a weekend warrior. And that's where I'm going with this. And the cost and the things that you need is just endless. The parts that you need. You need rods, you need fuel upgrades, you need pistons, you need a crankshaft, you need all the bolts that go along with it. And it gets rather expensive rather quickly. And then on top of that, you need to send your block and your heads off to a machine shop and get decked, get bored, get line hung, get line bored. The process to build a proper engine. Now, I went into this thinking I was gonna spend five to six thousand dollars, and I'm quickly finding out that it's gonna be much more than that. It's gonna be way more than I totally expected, but you know what? I'm gonna do it, and it may take me a few months to get this process going, but I'm gonna do it. There's just no option other than to get my weekend warrior and that and I want the street cred. Now this may be a two valve, but that's okay. It is totally fine. Two valves can be rather quick too. The things that you need in order to do a proper build just gets so, the list gets so long and it is so much money. But why do we do this? We do it because we love power. We do it because we love the feeling of going down the track or going down the road or having some guy pull up next to you in a Focus ST and your little bitty two valve and you know that these factory new cars, they have a whole lot more power but you know that we're gonna go a whole lot faster. And it's that feeling, that feeling that drives us to spend months upon years of building these vehicles. Now this vehicle means a whole lot to me. It is the world to me, just look at it. It's beautiful. The thought of not making this car what I want it drives me crazy. There's no way that I could ever go through life without building this car into some sort of race car. It's been my dream since 2001 when we bought this car off the showroom floor. Today's review is gonna be on Manly H-Beam rods. All right, so here's those rods that I said I would review. They come in this manly box. As you can see right here, they're 5.933 22 millimeter pins, 4.6 to 5 liter. If you look on the Real Street website, which is where I got these, you'll see that they are for Coyote or the 4.6 modular family. Therefore, they use the same stroke rod for maybe a different stroke crank. Here's the average weight, 432. That's the big end. And then the average uh, small end would be 182. They're packaged pretty well. They come in a box. Right here is your bolts. Now, they go whatever size bolts you have, 716s, 38s, ARP 2000, or the 8740s. And right here is your stretch bolt stretch, the foot pounds at the stretch. You're gonna need a bolt stretch dial indicator to check against this. There's instructions on how to install this. They say 90% of rod failure is due to an improper rod bolt torquing. So you really have to get the gauge and yeah, and that, that's what I'm going with this. You need a lot of tools to do it, dial bore gauges, micrometers, outside micrometers, inside micrometers depth gauges, there's a lot to build an engine, bolt stretch gauges, rod vices. The, you put the rods on a vise and you tighten the bolts and you see your stretch before you ever install them. Comes with a manly sticker. I already put one manly sticker on the inside of my trunk. I got that from another channel. 
He is built. He is a two valve that's in the eights. Congratulations to him. I wish he would subscribe to my channel. But right here, he just did a review on rods too. So I'm going to do it pretty much the same way he did in case he was curious about these rods. I don't even know if he watches my channel, but right here you can see the big end is that this down here is 431.8 and there's your small end 182.7 they put these on a type of device that holds one end level sturdy and then this end it lets droop we'll go over these rods it lets it droop and that's how it weighs it so it would hold steady on one side let this side droop onto a digital scale or hold this side steady and let this side droop onto a digital scale they come in a bag there's some oil in the bag already now here is the manly rod it says manly on it they say that these are stronger than the ones that come on the 0304 cobra i guess they're a different casting um they're built within all specifications because manly is a company that has to go by the big three's expectations or they would not work with them so these the tolerances with these rods for straightness or twist and the accuracy that manly goes through for final machining is pretty close they're all within two grams of each other so as you can see right here big in on the bottoms and then the small in on the top they're all within two grams of each other you still bring these to a machine shop you get them balanced for your crank your harmonic balance or your flex plate or your flywheel and you do the end balancing but they are very close so a machine shop shouldn't have any problem weight matching these now i have this dial indicator or uh dial it's a caliper i'm gonna zero it out and we're gonna go over the total thickness of this and this will be in inches so that's 0 0.59.1 inches swap it over to millimeters we'll zero it out all right now we're on millimeters we'll zero this out we'll get the beam length so 15.3 five we're gonna say millimeters and then we'll close this back down it's still on zero we'll measure this thickness right here and that is about three millimeters and then if we want to switch it to that it's one zero point one two four check this side We'll close it out and zero it out again. Point zero point zero nine four inches. That's in inches. Go to millimeters. 15.3 millimeters. Now we'll do the inside. This is without bearings. Check for roundness, it's perfectly round at both your X and Y angle. Let's see how thick it is down here. We'll see what it is on the wrist pin side, the small end. We're still in millimeters. It's 2.519 millimeters. Switch that over to inches, it's almost one inch. Go to the inside. So 
the machining is very nice. They have a very smooth finish. As you can see, it's a pretty thick H-beam. The depth down in there, let's see, is a, the depth right here is about almost one inch. That's a one inch bar right there. The total width, is 31.41 millimeters. Let's get a little ac more accurate reading. 31.12, we'll say that's 10. 31.12 millimeters there. On the caps, we're at 24.21 millimeters on the end caps. These right here, these are 8740 bolts. They're good to 700 horsepower. That's them playing it safe. I probably will upgrade to the ARP 2000 bolts. I was in a rush, accidentally ordered the wrong thing that night. Very solid rod, very nice finish. The brass inserts, this is for a floating wrist pin right here. Still no bearings in here. You're gonna need a tool to check your oil clearances for this end. I thank you all for watching. I put up two videos every Sunday. One is some sort of vlog, some sort of how-to. The other is this tool is cool. I put up videos with tools that you can use in or around the shop or on your car. So stay tuned for many more episodes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Peace.